Let's turn today to Luke's Gospel, chapter 14, and verse 25. Now great multitudes were going along with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother, and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. In these remaining verses, right up to the end of this chapter, Jesus made very clear what the conditions were for being a disciple of his. There is no passage in the entire Bible which describes the conditions of discipleship more clearly than this section of scripture. And the parables that Jesus used here, the illustrations, highlight this fact. For example, after having laid down the conditions of discipleship, he said at the end in verse 34, Therefore salt is good, but if even salt has become tasteless, with what will it be seasoned? It is useless either for the soil or for the manure pile. It is thrown out. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. What's the meaning of that? That means let him understand what I'm trying to say. That the important thing with salt is not quantity, but quality. In a large plate of rice, we need very, very little salt to change the taste of that entire plate of rice. It's not quantity, but if the salt has lost its savor, then even a two plates of salt is not going to make any difference to the taste. It's quality that matters not quantity. That's the lesson we are to learn from this illustration. God never intended the church to be large in number. He said, you are the salt of the earth. How much salt do you need to alter the taste of a large plate of food? How much salt do you need to spread and influence the whole earth? Very little. But when the salt has lost its savor, the quality is gone, then even large bucketfuls and rivers of salt are not going to make any difference. It's quality that's important. Jesus said, you're the light of the world. How large does a bulb have to be to light up a whole area? It's not size. It is strength, intensity of light. And in both those illustrations of salt and light, Jesus emphasized quality. By their fruit you shall know them, he said, not by their size, by the quality of their lives. And it's very interesting that he mentioned this, mentions this in connection with the conditions of discipleship. That teaches us that it's when we fulfill these conditions of discipleship that we become salt which has not lost the savor, that we become the type of salt that God intends us to be. And so we see here the first condition of discipleship, or we can say the first way by which we can ensure that our salt retains its savor. If anyone, and it doesn't make a difference who we are, there's no partiality with God, comes to me and does not hate his own father, mother, wife, children, brothers and sisters, and his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Seven things that he mentioned, Father, mother, wife, children, brothers, sisters, and our own life. We can say it in groups, four different groups. First of all, father and mother are parents. Second, wife and children are immediate family. Third, brothers and sisters, that is our fellow believers in the church. And finally, our own life, our own soul life, which we have inherited from Adam. What are we to do to these? Hate them. What a strong word. Jesus always selected his words with care. He never used one word where he could have used another. Invariably, we find Jesus using the strongest words possible. When he wanted to rebuke Peter, he said, Get behind me, Satan. 
When he wanted to describe the Pharisees, he said, You generation of vipers, you whitewashed graves. He used very strong language. And here also he uses a strong word, hate. John says in 1 John chapter 3, Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. Hatred is the root from which murder comes. And applying that definition to this passage, we could understand this passage a little more clearly. There is a natural affection that we have for our parents, for our family members and relatives, for our fellow believers and friends in our local churches. A natural attachment, a natural linking up with those particular brothers and sisters whom we like in our local church. And what Jesus was saying here is that natural attachment has to be slain. Whoever hates, murders. That natural attachment must be slain if we want to be disciples. And what will happen when that natural attachment is slain? Does it mean that we shall have therefore no more affection for our parents or our wife and children? In fact, in um, one of the sections of scripture, we read about people having being without natural affection in 2 Timothy 3. That's not a virtue, to be without natural affection. But where we allow that natural affection to hinder us from following the Lord, then it is serious. And that's why Jesus said that that human attachment must be slain. And when it is slain, we read in 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 10 that when we bear in our body the dying of Jesus, what did Jesus die to? He died to that natural attachment. That's called the dying of Jesus in 2 Corinthians 4.10. It will be replaced, we read in 2 Corinthians 4.10, by the life of Jesus. In other words, by the divine nature. Jesus died to the natural attachment he had to his mother. That's why when she gave him some advice in the marriage at Cana, he turned around and said to her, Woman, what have I to do with you? Mine hour has not yet come. That's because he had died to that natural attachment to his mother. When his brothers and sisters wanted to meet him once, he said, Who are my brothers and sisters? Those who hear the word of God and do it. He had died to that natural attachment to his brothers and sisters. But that doesn't mean he didn't care for his mother. Even when he was hanging on the cross, unmindful of his own pain and suffering, he was concerned that his mother, Mary, should have a place to stay. He was the eldest son and he cared for her and provided a home for her. So, to hate father and mother means that I die to that natural attachment to them and love them in a divine way, which is in a pure way, which is in a far superior way. In other words, what the Lord is saying is give up this human love and have a divine love. Because in, your divi in divine love, you will not allow your parents to interfere in your following the Lord. Many people are unable to follow the Lord because they are influenced by the tears of their parents. They are influenced by the advice of their parents. And it is to such people Jesus said, says, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, he cannot be my disciple. And particularly in our land, we know how attachment to parents and relatives runs very strong. Family ties are strong. And they can be a hindrance to discipleship. First of all, towards our parents. Break that connection. Now we need to honor our parents first when we are children. And if you have not learned to honor your parents, you certainly shouldn't try to hate them as it says here. This command is only for those who have already obeyed the command to honor their parents. And for whom it is a pain to break off that attachment. Some people just delight in breaking off that attachment to their parents. This is not for them. You first need to learn to honor your parents. That's the first commandment we read in Ephesians 6. After you've done that as a child, you grow up to the place where you want to be a disciple of Jesus on your own. You don't want your parents to interfere in your obedience to God's commandments. Likewise, your wife and children. This is a little more difficult to break free from our wife and children so that we don't allow them 
to hinder us from following the Lord. You don't allow your wife, for example, to lead you to gossip into the home, in the home, to speaking evil and discussing evil about others. You break that and say, let's leave that. She may get offended, but you'll please the Lord. You don't allow your children and your love for your children to hinder you from being a disciple of Jesus. Third, those whom you're attached to in the church, brothers and sisters, don't let the compromising low standard of others hinder you from following the Lord. Maybe others around you, brothers and sisters, have a low standard. They're not wholehearted disciples of Jesus. Don't let them hinder you. Follow Jesus. Have a radical attitude towards the brothers and sisters and to your own family members of brothers and sisters and relatives and cousins, etc. That none of them will he be allowed to hinder you from following the Lord. And finally, your own life. That is the most difficult of all. Job once said in chapter 2 of the book of Job, skin for skin, Satan said concerning Job, skin for skin, yea, all that a man has will he give for his life. We love ourselves more than we love father, mother, wife, children, brothers and sisters. To hate our own life, that which you have inherited from Adam, our ego, our reputation, our self-will is the most difficult of all. But if we don't take this condition of seriously and go through these seven things that we have to people, that we have to hate, cut off, so that we can follow Jesus, if we don't fulfill it, Jesus said, we cannot be his disciple. May God give us grace to fulfill this condition.